Hi everyone. So today we're going to discuss the shootings in Uvalde, Texas. Um, so saying that, obviously, this is going to contain a little bit more mature content, uh, maybe even language and um, situation. So just ahead of that, this has to do with um, all those horrible things that we've been watching. The things that I want to discuss in this video, I want to touch upon a couple of topics uh, because this is an extremely complex and developing situation. Um, there are still a lot of details coming out and every day things seem to be changing. Timeline of things, um, uh, reasons and actions from law enforcement um, and just details about the event in general are just seem to be changing. Um, pretty uh, frequently. So the general timeline is that 18 year old man who I won't be saying their name um, he purchased two AR-15s um, legally and a bunch of ammunition. Um, he was at his uh, with his grandmother um, he shot and killed his grandmother um, drove a car, crashed um, into kind of like this ditch area nearby a school. After leaving the car, um, he saw some people in the distance. He started shooting at them. No one was injured. Um, then he started going towards the school. Um, there he was in the parking lot area outside the school for about five minutes. Um, he was able to get into the school through... A door that they thought was locked, um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. He got into the school, uh, he made way into one of the classrooms, started shooting, um, killed, um, in, in this whole sp span uh, of time, he killed 19 students and two teachers. From the time entering the building to when he was killed and shot, it was 77 minutes. Um, within the first couple of minutes, there were three officers that did um, um, engage with him. They engaged some shots and some fires. Um, then the officers, they left and um, kind of joined and created a perimeter. Officials went back into the school and were able to get um, keys from the janitor and open the uh, the room where the shooter was in and shoot him and kill him. That is the timeline that is of today, which is um, June 5th. This timeline has been updated and changed multiple times since then. Um, and that is to be expected um, on an ongoing thing. However, um... There has been big controversy with how law enforcement um, handled this situation and the time and the tardiness in them engaging the shooter um, in the school. Before I go into that situation, the timeline and the whole uh, controversy with the law enforcement themselves, I do want to talk about um, things that were happening um, in those um, minutes that um, in that almost hour that the shooter was in the school. Um, killing children. During this time, there were multiple phone calls coming from students inside the uh, school saying that there was an active shooter and that um, they were being shot at or that their students were killed and murdered. Um, also, during this time, um, there were various parents. Um, there's been multiple stories of multiple uh, parents breaching kind of like the uh, police um, boundary that they made around the school and running in, um, retrieving their children and running out. Uh, probably the most horrific uh, story to come out of this is of Mila Cerrillo, who was, who is 11 years old. Um, she describes the shooter coming into their, um, uh, their classroom. Um, she describes seeing, um, her teachers being shot down um and she decided that she was gonna play dead and part of this process was she smeared blood of um students that were murdered near her um onto her to appear as if she was dead 
So, now that we've gone into um, kind of those stories of what happened, and um, there's, like I said, there's many more, um, I do want to go into two more parts, which is um, the law enforcement um, controversy, and then I do want to talk about the victims themselves. Um, like I said, there are, um, it is normal to have, you know, an updated uh, timeline of events when things happen. However, um, more and more information is coming out where it looks like it's less about um, updating a timeline of events and more that the police and the uh, law enforcement that was there um, did not perform their actions adequately, and some would even say cowardly. Um, one thing, um, that was initially reported was that there was a law enforcement agent that engaged with the shooter once he got to the school. There was no police officer there. Um, the other thing that was inaccurate and probably the most controversial thing was that um, the reasoning why they waited so long, almost an hour, to uh, go back into the school was because they believed it was no longer an active shooter situation. Um, they were saying it was most likely, or well, it was a hostage situation, and um, that 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 that's why they were no longer uh, going in and then trying to engage in and take down the shooter. Already after telling you the timeline of events and everything and some of the stories that happened during the shooting, um, it's extremely hard to believe this and to trust law enforcement um, in in this situation. Um, like I said, there were multiple phone calls saying um, that the shooter was shooting and killing people during that time. Um, and that um, there were students still inside, that there were uh, parents running into the school retrieving their children. Um, this was a very active situation. It's extremely hard to uh, believe this. Um, what we can most likely um, say, and once again, we're going into now my opinion. Um, it looks like law enforcement was scared. They weren't ready. Or they didn't know what to do. They were frazzled. Um, I I am not gonna go as far as to say like law enforcement didn't care. Like I'm I'm sure they cared about the lives, and I'm sure they cared about their own lives. Um, it is a normal and natural um, reaction to be scared of your life, and it's a normal reaction to not want to die and not get shot at. Um, Unfortunately, that is like one of the uh, roles that law enforcement plays in. And we have to also think why were they, if they were scared or they had some hesitation to go in, why? Well, I would be extremely hesitant to go into any building of any shooter, especially one that has AR, uh, AR-15s, AR uh, semi-automatic assault rifles, um, and with... How no you how, you don't know how much ammunition, um these uh weapons the AR-15s they are a modified version of military guns um uh, military guns um used to murder and kill swaths of people as quickly and as efficiently as possible and the laws of course are different in every uh every uh, state. Um, however, in Texas, um, once you are 18, you are able to purchase um, the semi-automatic rifles and uh, assault rifles. Um, so yeah, I would be definitely scared. If I was a police officer and all I had maybe was a, a pistol going against an AR AR-15, not really much of a competition. The guns are getting much more powerful to gain. They're much more uh, stronger than... They have ever been, they are uh, much more lethal than they ever have been in, in history, right? In the shooting of Buffalo, New York, um, literally a week or two before this shooting, another 18-year-old um, who went to that grocery store 
he studied uh, which guns um, the security officers and the security that was there and the um, the wep uh, the armor that they wear um, so he could buy specifically uh, the gun and the ammunition that would uh, be effective against that. Um, so it literally um, sounds like this almost military realistic uh, sh uh, strategic uh, way of going for these shootings, these mass shootings. Um, and they have the tools. I mean, um, for the most part, um, they have the tools to be able to do it. And uh, most likely, none of these officers nor the um, department there in Uvalde will have any repercussions from this. Um, their only repercussions will be their conscious, their guilty conscious um, that they'll have to carry. That there is most likely, and I think a reasonable um, uh, argument to be made, that through their actions, um, multiple children were murdered or killed um during their time waiting or um, that could have received um um health uh, medical attention um so blood is on their hands also i do want to talk about the uh victims um i do want to name and go through the children that were killed and and also and also talk about a few of them real quick so these are those that were killed that day. It was McKenna Lee Elrod, who was 10 years old. Um, Layla Salazar, who was 11 years old. Miranda Mattis, 11 years old. Nevea Bravo, 10 years old. Jose Manuel Flores Jr., 10 years old. Xavier Lopez, 10 years old. Tess Marie Mata, 10 years old. Rogelio Torres, 10 years old. Elia Amia Garcia, 9 years old. Elia A. Torres, 10 years old. Annabelle Guadalupe Rodriguez, 10 years old. Jackie Caceres, 9 years old. Yusea Garcia. JC Carmelo Yuvan, oh, 10 years old. Meiji. Juliana Rodriguez, 10 years old. Jayla Nicole Sigura, 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 10 years old. Um, Amory Joe Garza, 10 years old. Alexandria Anya Rubio, 10 years old. Alicia Ramirez, 10 years old. And then their teachers, Irma Garcia, who was 48, and then Eva Mireles, who was 44. Um, I do want to talk about a few of them. Um, Leila Salazar, who was, 10, who was 11, um, she, um, well, uh, some things I was able to read online about her was, you know, she was, she loved swimming, she loved dancing. Um, she was quite the runner um, if, uh, close to this time, um, she was uh, participating in field day and won multiple, um, uh, uh, first place ribbons. Um, Jackie Caceres, who, uh, was nine, um, just two weeks before, um, the shooting, uh, she received her first communion. Um, she was described as someone who just loved to help others. And she was just so um, happy um, to just be with her family. Um, Irma Garcia, one of the teachers, um, she was finishing her uh, 23rd uh, year of teaching at Rob Elementary. Um, she loved spending time with her family. She loved doing barbecues. She married her husband, Joe Garcia, around the same time she started teaching. Um, a update... Uh, an unfortunate update on this story is that her husband, two days after the shooting, um, died from a heart attack. Um, they left four children. The reason I want to talk about them and name them and talk about them is because um, um, this has become a almost daily occurrence, a weekly occurrence of these shootings and um, these school shootings 
are becoming once again more increasingly um, consistent and um, uh, the numbers we we read the numbers but those numbers are children those numbers are uh, men women um, I think humanizing um, especially in these uh, tragic situations um, the victims is extremely important um, because they're not numbers they are children that were murdered and something that could have been 100% preventable. Saying that, I recommend people go to everytown.org. There you can um, get more information on things like common sense gun laws um, and ways that they can advocate for themselves and uh, talk to their senators and politicians and hold them accountable for um, these uh, tragedies. Um, that are happening uh, every day across the country. Um, right now, inaction is the only action that people have taken. Um, do we have a huge demographic of 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, and 20-year-olds, young men who feel disenfranchised and angry at the world and um, feel like um, they don't have purpose in life? 100%. Um, and having these loose uh, gun laws and and these mental health issues is a dangerous recipe, and w and we're seeing it every day. Um, um, I'm going to make an appeal right now to my Christian um, brothers and sisters, especially. Um, I think we have a lot of work to do, and we know uh, faith without works is dead unto itself. So I really uh, make an appeal to you to make an effort to um, to uh, put some actions to your to your faith and to your beliefs um, because once again if if not um, it's worthless. I hope um, this video has been somewhat informative, and I hope you take some time to read upon uh, about the victims and who died there and their families, and if you're able to support them in any way um, to do so. Um, and then also go to that website and see and uh, educate yourself on what we can do to um, have less children die in our country.